Page six. Okay, we are going to be talking a little bit more about consensus decision making. I know we've talked about it a ton already, but I want to talk about it in a bit more detail. So consensus actually means to think or feel together. So if you think about what consensus is, it's when everybody actually has to agree to a decision. So it's just a way of making everyone think in the same way and actually kind of want the same thing. So a question that I have for you is, is this easy to do? So even thinking about in phys ed on our free Fridays, trying to pick a game that everybody actually wants to play can be really tricky. Even if one person doesn't agree, then that means that it can't pass. So it's not a very easy thing to do, especially when you're looking at getting bigger groups together. So just a really quick review. When we're talking about consensus in the different clans, we have our women's council and our men's council. This is when all the men get together, including the children, and all the women get together, including the children, and they discuss an issue and they come up with a decision that they all agree with. So the main purpose of the women's council and the men's council is to advise the clan mothers. Once the clan mother knows what the people in her clan want, she's then gonna go ahead and tell the Hoyna what they want and the Hoyna is gonna go to the grand council and make sure that they're representing all of their people there. Okay, we've also talked about consensus at the Grand Council. So if you remember, the elder brothers are gonna discuss the issue first. If they can both agree, they're gonna pass it off to the younger brothers. And the younger brothers are then gonna pass it off to the Onondaga. So you might remember Onondaga gets the last say because that was the only way that they could convince Tadadaho to join the Iroquois Confederacy. He felt like he had a lot of power, but really everybody's got a lot of power because anybody can stop the decision made from happening at any point when they're discussing it if they don't agree. So everybody had that veto power. Okay, so our elders are the Mohawk and the Seneca. Our youngers are the Oneida and the Cayuga. And lastly, the Onondaga will confirm the decision if they all agree. Okay, so if they don't agree, then they're gonna restart this process over and over again of why they don't agree. So sometimes it can take a really long time if they have to go through it a bunch of times. If they still can all come to an agreement, then they're just gonna cover the fire with ashes. And then the clans are able to go back to their homes and do whatever that they, they feel is right, as long as it doesn't go against the great law of peace. So they can make any decision they want for their clan, as long as it doesn't harm another clan or another nation. Okay. We also had these really important jobs. The Mohawk is always going to announce the decision of the Grand Council. So if they are able to come to consensus, the Mohawk is to stand up and say, all right, this is what we have decided. The Onondaga are the keepers of the council fire. Remember, they're right in the middle of the territory. So it made sense for everybody to come to them when they're making big decisions. And lastly, we've got our Mohawk and Seneca. They're the gatekeepers. And the reason they're the gatekeepers is because they're kind of on either end of the Iroquois Confederacy. So if other nations are coming in and want to wage war, it's their job to make sure they're offering peace. Alrighty, so for some new specific stuff, what needs to happen for consensus to be successful? So as you can imagine, making decisions that everybody agrees with can be a little bit challenging. So me and my class a few years ago came up with this acronym called chocolate cherry pie. So we said, okay, all the letters of the words that we're using have CC pie. So let's do chocolate cherry pie as our way of remembering the different things. So if you think about a word that starts with C that you would need for everybody to agree, everybody has got to cooperate. You can't have consensus if people do not cooperate. If there's a, someone that's being really tricky, you're going to have a really bad time trying to get everyone to agree to it. A solution. Another one is compromise. Compromise is a common agreement. So compromise is when two people maybe want different things and they kind of meet in the middle in order to make everybody at least a little bit happy. So an example I like to use is maybe you want strawberry ice cream for dessert, your sibling wants chocolate uh, ice cream for dessert, and somebody else wants vanilla. And you guys agree to get Neapolitan ice cream because then everybody kind of gets a little bit of everything. So that would be a good compromise. For P, participation of all members. So everybody needs to be there, but they also need to participate. They need to get the opinions of absolutely everybody. And you're not just sitting off in the corner quietly, just kind of agreeing. They wanna know what everybody actually wants so that you can have a really successful consensus decision. I stands for includes as many members as possible in the decision making. And this in the Iroquois even includes the children. They wanna make sure that everybody has a say. So. Think about, would you really like to live in the Iroquois? Because right now you can't vote, but this would give you an opportunity to always have your voice heard and you would be able to have, have your say matter. 
Okay. And the last one was equal participation. So we know that everyone's pretty equal in the Iroquois when they're making decisions. Everybody has the opportunity to discuss their concerns. Um, and everybody also has veto power. So at any point, if someone doesn't agree with what's happening, then they're going to stop and reevaluate everything that they're discussing. All right, so there's five very specific steps that they use in consensus in the Iroquois Confederacy. So the first one is they need to identify the topic at hand and get opinions from all members. So for example, if they were going to discuss whether or not they should be going to war with a different nation, they would put that out to the men's and the women's council and then they would get into their councils and kind of discuss how they feel about that. Then they're gonna propose a decision based off of the discussion. So they're going to listen in on how people are feeling in that discussion and come up with an idea and say, okay, from what I've heard in your discussion, this is what I think you want. So they might say, okay, it sounds like we do not want to go to war with this other nation. And that would be the decision that they propose. Then this is a really important step. They're going to test for consensus. So if they put out, okay, we're not going to go to war with this other nation, then they're going to see if everybody agrees with that decision. If they get everybody's agreement and they've reached consensus at step three, we're done. We're going to stop at step three. But as you can imagine, it's very pretty unlikely they're going to get consensus that first time around. It's going to take a lot of discussion. So if there's even one person that doesn't agree with the decision, they're going to go on to step four, which is when they're going to discuss it a little bit more and say, OK, I see you don't agree, but why? What is your concerns? Let's discuss those once they've heard the concerns then they are going to modify the proposal. So for like we talked about in the ice cream example, they said, no, I don't want strawberry. I don't want vanilla. I don't want chocolate. Okay, here's a new modified proposal. What if we get Neapolitan ice cream, then everybody's happy. So after they've come up with a new modified proposal, they're going to go right back up to step three and test for consensus. Okay, if now they've reached consensus, then they're good. They're done. They've made their decision. But it can happen more than once that they need to go through steps three and four and kind of discuss why people are not happy with what decision they've come up with. So it can be really time consuming to come up with consensus. All right, so we're gonna talk about some pros and cons, starting with the pros of consensus decision making. At the end, everybody's in agreement. Everybody is happy with the decision. Everybody has a say in what's going to happen. Minorities are represented. And what I mean by that is if we think about how we make decisions in Canada, we use something called majority rule. So if you're part of the majority, great, that means your decision is going to be passed. But sometimes that means that minorities don't really get representation or have their voices heard. So one of the pros of consensus is even minorities get a say in things and they get kind of their voices heard a little bit more than they do in majority rule. Also, there's lots of cooperation. There's no winners versus losers mentality. There's always going to be everybody is a winner because everybody got their say. OK, so some cons, even though consensus has lots of great things, there's some not so great things about consensus decision making. It can be really frustrating trying to get everybody to agree and have all their say. Minorities hold a lot of power. So even though we said minorities having power could be a pro, it can also be a con because if the majority of people really want something, but there's even one person that does not want it, it's not going to happen. So they have a lot of power. There's always that person. So whenever I have consensus discussions in class, which unfortunately we can't do this here, then there's always at least one person when that like kind of likes to stir the pot a little bit or have a unique perspective on things. And that can make everybody else really frustrated. But it's always interesting to see the dynamic of people discussing and trying to convince that one tricky person to agree with everybody else. OK, also, it takes a long time to make decisions. So even though everybody's happy at the end, it takes a really long time for things to get done because they might have to discuss it a few times to get everybody happy. And lastly, it doesn't really work with a large group, even though in a small group we would be able to use consensus decision making. It wouldn't really work if we tried to use consensus for everybody in Canada to agree to something or even everybody in Edmonton it would just be really challenging to get everyone on board with the same ideas. All right, guys, you've got your unit test next week, so make sure that you are reviewing some material. I'll put up our study guide next week as well for you to review before you do your unit test and good luck with your exit pass.